Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trek on, say it with me, Tuesday. Tuesday. How are you doing this Tuesday, Aaron? I'm doing great, Gina. And I, you know what I'm ready for? Mm, I have one guess. Go ahead. The baseball classic. <laughs> well, that's true. I am ready for the World Baseball Classic game, which is tonight. But that's a whole other discussion. What yes. I'm really ready for is summer. Uh, yes, I knew of it. Summer, summer camp season is almost upon us, Gina. Yes, I think every scout out there, um, every new scout, old scout, any scout is like summer camp. They live for summer camp season. And I really believe, I don't know many scouts whose favorite time of the year is not summer camp season. Yeah, summer camp is a really, really cool experience for scouts. It's really, um, you know, for especially for young scouts. I remember my son's first experience at summer camp. I went with him and it was eye-opening for him in a good way. It was the first time he'd really gone camping without me right next to him every step of the way it's a big step in that progression towards being a you know a big kid where you're responsible for your own stuff uh and you know they're going to forget things they're going to make mistakes they may even get homesick but it's a very very safe environment and the main thing is they have lots of fun stuff to do a lot of cool things to do some merit badges to earn maybe some activities to try they've never tried before and speaking of all that gina yes we've got eight summer camps to look at today Yes. So you guys, if you've been a longtime fan of the show slash the magazine, Scout Life, formerly known as Boys Life, you have seen that pretty much every year, as long as I've been here, we've done something called like a cool camps roundup where we highlight a handful of camps, could be six, could be eight, like it is this year. And we say, hey, these are some great camps you should check out. And they are definitely standout camps. But something happens every time we go through these camps, Aaron. Let's just be mm -hmm. frank. Mm -hmm. Sure. We go through just eight of hundreds of camps. And of course, people are like, but hey, there's a camp here that's what like about my amazing. Camp? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So for you guys, I have two ideas. Go to this link at the bottom of the screen. That is where we have our past roundup. So there's a good chance your favorite camp has already been mentioned if it's not mentioned today. And if it isn't there and it isn't mentioned today, there's a good chance it's on our radar. It's going to make it onto the list. It's if, it, if it's a BSA camp, it's a wonderful camp. We, you know, we stand behind our camps. Um, mm -hmm. But also we pick, Aaron made a great point before we went live. These camps get selected too for the diversity of what they offer each year. Mm -hmm. You know, like we wouldn't put a bunch of camps that like archery is their, you know, number one activity because right. you just don't see as many options this year. Exactly. Yes. And one thing that's, that's funny, Jane, I've been at the BSA long enough. When I first started at what was called Boys Life Magazine at the time, we didn't have a website. And then shortly after, behind the scenes, Brian joined not too long after I did. But what was funny is I was doing camp roundups back then and they would come out, like you said, six to eight in every printed issue and they would be gone. And then the next year, like you say, people would say, well, what about my camp? Well, we probably covered it in the past. We just didn't have any way to keep up with that. Thank goodness. Now we do. We've got archives on our websites of all the past, or at least a lot of the past summer camps that we've covered, right? So uh, if you don't hear your favorite camp mentioned today, go into our archives, like Gina said. And number two, let us know about it. Right. And these, again, they're your local BSA camps. You know, they exist all year. They, as far as I know, all run summertime programs. Some of them run uh, winter programs. Right. They're Some not the high adventure bases. Okay. You're not right. going to hear the high adventure bases make it into these lists. These are your good old fashioned Boy Scouts of America camps. Yes. Old fashioned summer camp, or in some cases, like you say, they might be open for certain events. Some of them might be open for uh, like random weekends in the fall and the spring. Maybe, maybe there's a week long winter camp or like a fall camp during fall break or a spring camp during spring break. So lots of opportunities to visit these properties. Uh, some of the programs might change a little bit, right? Depending on the season, but certainly uh, a high quality camping and also relatively speaking, low cost experience for a lot of these. Yes. And one other caveat or one other thing to note, I should say, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. we're talking about summer camp. And when we talk about specifically summer camp, usually we're talking and we're talking about overnight summer camps. We're talking about Scouts BSA aged youth. Mm -hmm. However, most, if not all of these camps yep. also run what are called day camps yep. where you might or even sometimes do like twilight camps. They yep. call them different things. Mm -hmm. But that's where Cub Scouts go. So 
if you are a Cub Scout parent watching this, don't think, oh, that's down the road. Me. Right. Yeah, they have Cub Scout activities. They have Cub Scout programs as well. Yes, they yes. do. Yes. Xavier, in fact, says that he went to a four-day summer camp. I wonder if it was a day camp or an overnighter. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah. I believe, I mean, Xavier's growing up right before our very eyes. I know. But he is a Cub Scout. I, I know. I think he's still a Cub Scout. Yep. Yes. He said it felt like a long time, which is such a scout thing to say. It mm -hmm. does. You go for, you know, four days, five days, and it feels like you lived somewhere else for four years. Yes. And exact expectations, 10 out of 10. Yep. That, okay, mm -hmm. that that's another thing about camp. My favorite thing when kids come back for camp, they're like, I was sweaty. I was tired. It was, I didn't sleep. My back hurts. I got a blister. It was the best week of my life, you know? <laughs> yeah, and you're that's like, exactly right. It was hot, there were mosquitoes. Oh. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That is 100% accurate. And I think, honestly, what scouts like about summer camp, Gina, is the uh, independence of that, of, of being out with, you know, maybe possibly 20, 30, 40, 100, maybe other scouts, depending on the size of the camp. You make new friends. You go to different activities. You have a schedule every day. You don't need mom in there, mom and dad right by your side holding your hand. You get to do all that stuff right. on your own. It's, it's a very, very cool experience. My son's favorite place to go is the camp shop um, where they has had sodas. And so yes. uh, my son who didn't have access, regular access to sodas when he was at home, guess what he found at Scout Camp? Oh, I bet Unlimited I know. Unlimited sodas. <laughs> I bet I know. That is such a fun treat. And the food is really good. Um, uh -huh. Scouts are usually the ones making it, which is pretty cool. They, yeah. you know, they kind of serve it in different ways. And one of the ways that they give back to their camp is by cooking. Well, um, I'm glad you said that, Gina, because these Scout Camps wouldn't exist without young people working at them. Yes, yes. We're going to talk yes. about that too a little bit, the opportunities on the other side. It's like, I knew we were going to talk about that. And then I forgot it. I got so excited. Yes. If you're watching this and you're an adult or you're an older youth, mm -hmm. you need to stay tuned. We're going to be throughout the show talking about this website that is at the bottom of the screen. Brand and it new. Is, yeah, it's brand new. It's, uh, we got to give credit to Aaron and Brian who made it happen behind the scenes. Brian and in mostly, front of the camera, Aaron. Mostly Brian. No, no. Both of these guys definitely had a lot to do with it. It's a great place where you can find a summer camp job kind of all in one place. It's crazy to think we didn't have this, but we didn't have this. And now we do. And people are, are really loving it. So head there. Um, I think that there are jobs for kit, for youth as young as 15. So mm -hmm. if you're yep. looking for a summer job, why not consider a summer camp? And if you're a parent of a kid who's going to be 15 by the time summer gets here, might want to forward that link to your friends. Uh, take a look at it yourself. You can search by keywords, by location, by activity, all kinds of stuff like that. It's pretty cool. One other thing I'll point out too is one distinction when we think about summer camps is I know a lot of times parents think summer camp, okay, that means I'm sending my kid off. I'm not going to be there. And that is a big appealing point to some parents. Mm -hmm. And that is a big appealing point to some kids. Mm -hmm. But some parents might think like, well, I kind of want to go if they're going to be staying overnight. Mm -hmm. Luckily for you, talk to your unit. <laughs> I bet they'd be so happy for you to go. There are probably very likely they opportunities need, for you to get they probably out there. Need, they probably need drivers. They need chaperones. They need people uh, to help get kids there. My experience going as an adult to a couple of summer camps, Gina, was that once you get there as an adult, for me personally, we had a lot of downtime. I read books. It's just nice and relaxing. Sit mm -hmm. out by the water or, or maybe if you prefer the air conditioning, you can go into the dining lodge or something like that. You, seriously, and, man, you'd be surprised. Yeah, this, this you really might get funny. to take part. In, you don't bet on it. You kind of go in, don't bet on anything. But you yep. might get to take part in some fun activity that you never yep. expected to do. Yep. You might meet someone famous because seriously, people do show up at these camps, like, you know, kind of minor celebrities or major celebrities. You just never know to entertain mm -hmm. the kids or mm -hmm. they're just stopping through or they're mm -hmm. like secret you know, fans of scouting. So absolutely, there's some cool stuff that happens in camp. And also you'll probably eat some really good food. I mean, could it be done? But speaking of food, um, Camp Melita Island is tuned in today and they said meals are prepared for campers at Camp Melita Island. That's pretty cool. Montana Council. I bet that's a nice, cool place to visit in the, the summer. Boat. Yeah, I know a, a lot of folks from uh, uh, the, our area will go maybe somewhere like that. It will Rob, camp. Rob yep. is in our area and he says their troop is driving from Dallas to camp in Southeast Tennessee at the Skymont Scout Reservation. Yeah, I, I would love to hear different folks philosophy. I think some people like to stay local for summer camp, but there's mm -hmm. no rule that says you have to stay local. You can 
drive, you can transport, go to a different state. You can go all the way across the country if you want to. Same thing, by the way, uh, if you're looking for a job, you don't necessarily have to look for a job within your yeah. own area. If you're Definitely. looking for an adventure. You really do not. You can fly across the country, check out all the jobs at jobs.scoutlife.org. Mm -hmm. We've also been told, you know, retirees enjoy these jobs too. You know, yeah. they're not, there's not an the age job, limit. It's not for just sure. for kids. Exactly mm -hmm. right. Yep. Yep. Um, Xavier, happy birthday to your brother. I know he is or was a scout. So I definitely big happy birthday to him. Even if he wasn't happy birthday, we say happy birthday to people. He definitely was not. at some point. Yes. yes. He was. Mm -hmm. Um, also read, oh, okay. Lenny says we left out. They had good weather 95% of the time at scout camp. Um, they put together rain day programs just in case, which is mm -hmm. brilliant. They had yep. a lot of activities um, under the patrol's dining fly, miniature pioneering, signaling from the tent to tent. Yeah, it's smart to just kind of have some things just in case of rain. There's always a chance of rain. At least there is here. Yeah, um, yeah. And also saw a really good comment. Oh, Kevin. Kevin said merit badges. We didn't even bring up yeah. how, you know, uh, yeah. summer camp is a merit badge haven. Yeah, there's a, there's a thing, a program at most summer camps. Merit badges in general, or I should say merit badge in specific, but advancement in general. A lot of camps have a program called like Trail to First Class or something along those lines where, you know, scouts who just joined, maybe even crossing over like right about now, right? February or March is crossover season right now. If they get to summer camp this summer, they can, in a period of four days or so, make huge, huge jumps in their advancement. Maybe not all the way to first class, but maybe pretty close. Definitely. And um, also, Camp Melita came back and said, Montana is beautiful in the summer. So everybody mm. at home, definitely, you can look in the comments and check out Camp Melita Island right now. But you could also cool. consider KM Scout Ranch, which also happens to be in Montana um, in Lewiston, Lewistown. Let me know my Montana peeps. Is it Lewistown or Lewiston? I think it's Lewistown, Montana. I'm going to guess um, Lewistown as well. Okay, good. I mean, I think that that's a safe bet. Montana is so cool always. And people will really feel like I've been recognizing it. Um, if you're 14 years or older, you can get certified to drive an all terrain vehicle with the Polaris ATV experience. Once you're trained, you'll have miles of trails to explore on 700 acres of the 1,000 acre forested camp in the mountains. You can also hit the trails on a mountain bike. You can go to a ghost town. Every Friday, the camp hosts Kendall Day when scouts head to the remnants of the old mining town site. Kendall was settled in the early 1900s. There you can explore town artifacts, play time period games, and compete in relay races. In the central Montana mountains, you're a good distance from major cities. That means awesome night skies filled with stars. Montana's known for that for sure. There's a spring-fed pond stocked with trout, and you might see turkey and deer. Many troops choose to add a trip before or after their week to camp at nearby Glacier or Yellowstone National Park. Can't beat that. Very, very, very cool. Um I, mean, I want to point out real quick before we get to our next camp, Wendy points out in the comments that their troop goes to different camps every year. And that's also interesting. Some folks, I think, have the same, you know, their unit goes to the same summer camp every year because they like it. That's their tradition. Uh, my son's scout unit did the same thing as Wendy's. They went to a different camp every year, sometimes a little bit further away, uh, sometimes a little bit closer, sometimes maybe, you know, right down the road, uh, Different, I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do it, right? You do Something it. Something different works for different families because some yep. families are like, we only want to go if it's going to take us across the country. And then some families are like, we really need to stick closer to home. Mm -hmm. Rob says KM is on their bucket list. Um, Xavier says, how's your baby, Gina? Xavier, she's great. And I'm so glad you asked because I was just going to say, sorry if you guys hear her in the background. You know, <laughs> she's fighting that nap time. <laughs> uh, I also want to point out uh, someone posting for the Iron Forge District says their son is will be staffing summer camp for the third year in a row, or at least the third summer, maybe not third in a row, right? Third summer at Bash Shore Scout Reservation in PA, Pennsylvania. That's a cool summer job. Uh, and let me throw, you know, you're thinking their son, three summers in a row, maybe he's 21. Aaron, maybe not he's... Necessarily. Yes, maybe he's 60. Could be. Could totally. And he's been serving for three, three summers. It's possible. <laughs> And so, I think that's very cool. I, I say that because he's doing great. Yes. When we start talking about these jobs, they really are really great for teens and people right out of college. But at first, when we started talking about them, we found out there are a lot of retirees who take these jobs on too, and yep. they they need you. 
Yep, yep, yep. And we'll be we'll be talking about jobs a little bit um, throughout the rest of the show today. But I teachers, want to quick... Aaron, sorry, let me, I had another idea. What about yes. teachers? Love it. They have summers off sometimes. Yes, they love it. And they're, they're used to dealing with uh, children, yes. used to education, so that those skills could definitely come in handy in summer camp. One of the things that I noticed about my our, my son and their uh, his scout friends at summer camp was they um, they definitely listen to kids who are a year or two older than them better than they listen to me who's 30 years older than them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they definitely liked the older kids working at camp. And I can even remember when I was a kid uh, going to summer camp and, and just thought that our camp counselor, who was probably three or four years older than me, I mean, he just seemed like he was this, you know, incredible, you know, person who came down yes. to meet us from the heavens yes. or whatever. So uh, that is also another advantage. They're like of just old enough camp. that they're adults, but yes. they're like close enough that you're like, gosh, they're the coolest they're person ever. They go to concerts they, and they go to college. Right. They like the same type of video <laughs> games, maybe the yeah. same type of music or something like that. They're not out of touch like someone like me. Um, the next council or camp or the next camp that I want to mention real quick, uh, speaking of good places to visit during the summer, Gina, the Alaska ultimate high adventure camp. This is part of the great Alaska council in Anchorage. Uh, very, very cool. This program offers a, a program called user, user imagination offers several pre-planned trips, or you can customize your own epic adventure. Go backpacking in a national forest, add in sea kayaking, go fishing on a charter boat, or visit a glacier. You can also go white water rafting. Um, when your unit arrives in Anchorage, you get picked up at the airport, escorted to Camp Gorsuch for a review of your trip and a good night's sleep. All the logistics, guides, transportation, lodging, food, and cooking equipment is taken care of. That's one thing about summer camp, uh, depending on the situation, but a lot of times all that stuff is included in your basic fee. Um, if you don't want to venture into the backcountry, you can just hang around Anchorage, go car camping at a state park, take a day hike to a glacier, explore a gold mine, visit museums, catch a glimpse of Denali and North America's highest mountain, all kinds of stuff to do. Is it, is it, um, is it a humble brag, Gina, if I say that I've been there before? To this yes, camp? because that camp looks awesome. First of all, it's in Alaska. So that's mm -hmm. like a bucket list for many of us to try to go there. And it just yep. looked beautiful and all the yes. fishing. Yep. Yeah, that's another thing, boy. If you're if if you're into something like fishing, if you're into something like kayaking or swimming or whatever it is, you can find a camp that if done if they don't just offer it, they may even like specialize in and have some sort of opportunities that are really kind of rare and unusual. Something you might not be able to just get anywhere else. Chris says Camp Yaguk. Yaguk. Yep. In Rhode Island is I a local and national treasure. I believe that they were that. on the list last mm -hmm. year. I think. Yep. We've covered them at some point. I can't remember. They when. are a national sure. treasure. That's right. Yep. Yep. And Todd says international scouts at summer camp. That's another good thing we we haven't brought up. Uh, very often times you will be at summer camp and there will be a ton of scouts from another country and it is so cool and the kids get like hooked up, become pen pals. It's a very common occurrence. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, Camp Sydney Dew. I love that name, Camp Sydney Dew. Northwest Georgia Council. Um, camping in history. You are set in the foot or Camp Sydney Dew is set in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains or Appalachian Mountains, depending on how you pronounce it. That's personal preference, I believe. Sydney Dew has 15 campsites, four of which are original from 1939. Many facilities around the 650-acre camp were projects from that era, like the old dining hall, which now serves as the Order of the Arrow Lodge. The OA Lodge also performs a call-out ceremony, which has been done the same way for decades. There are programs for all. Whether you're a first-timer or an experienced camper, you have your choice from more than 50 merit badges. 50! After working on badges, the afternoons are free. You can try a cope tower, take a dip in the pool, or head off-site for whitewater rafting. Do you want some watermelon? Evening programs feature activities like chess tournaments and basketball games, but a favorite is Waguli Watermelon Wednesday. That's when everybody hangs out while music is playing, enjoys a few games, and devours some tasty watermelon. I can just envision all the hanging out going on at that camp. <laughs> I bet there's tons of hanging out, and I also want to point out at this camp, like at a lot of camps, they do uh, off-site activities. In this case, it's whitewater rafting. You might be thinking, I don't really want to go to summer camp at whatever location. There's not a river there. There's not a lake, whatever. Well, there probably is. 
you just they just might take you off site to do stuff like that. There's a lot of cool opportunities like that. Judith. Yes, Aaron, dun, 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 dun. that's a breaking news sound. We've got KM Scout Ranch in the house. They commented, um, guys, remember we mentioned KM Scout Ranch at the top of the show today. Pretty cool camp. Thank you for watching, guys. Definitely very, very cool. Um, our next count, uh, next count, our next camp, Gina. We're going to go up to the Northwest. How about the Pacific Northwest? What do you think? Camp Baldwin, uh, which is part of the Cascade Pacific Council in, is it Dufer, you think? Dufer, Oregon? Um, you want to bring warm clothes for cool nights as this camp sits at 3,500 feet in elevation on the east side of Mount Hood. Climbing is done on natural rocks. Rock climbing is another cool activity you can do at summer camp. Uh, the lake feels chilly. Take advantage of the off-site outings, whitewater rafting again, and an adventure park with alpine slides. Uh, Baldwin provides the menu before you get to camp. That's because you cook most of your meals. Knowing the menu beforehand allows you to customize it. Pancakes on the menu, pack some blueberries or chocolate chips to, chips to kick breakfast up a knot. Um, uh, go for a trail ride on a horse, either while working on the horsemanship merit badge or not. The camp has 45 horses. This camp owns 45 horses. You can sign up for trail rides into the nearby national forest. Another example, you're not necessarily limited to activities just on the property. These uh, Most camps have relationships with outfitters and properties around them. In this case, you can take a horse ride into a nearby national forest. You can also sleep under the stars on an overnight ride. I want to mention real quick, they mentioned uh, the meals. Different camps do meals in different ways. With both camps that I went to, there was a dining hall where you would go and it was like cafeteria style, but not all camps do that. Some camps a little more primitive don't have a dining hall, but they, they will just give you the, their food for the day or maybe for the week and you cook it yourself at your oh. campsite or on the trail or something like that. Cool. That's fun. Yeah. yeah you can definitely. put your own spin on it. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm loving this lineup of camps. I'm not just saying that. I have been pretty interested in all of them. I like the locations of all of them. I would choose to take a vacation to all of yeah, them. Yeah, yes, 100%, yes. This next one is no uh, exception, Cuyuna Scout Camp, which is a Twin Valley Council camp in Cross Lake, Minnesota. You can cast a line, guys, more fishing. There are three on-site lakes. It's a fishing paradise. You can catch largemouth bass, pike, bluegill, and crappie. The camp offers about 35 merit badges, including fishing and fly fishing. On Wednesdays, you have free time to create your own adventure, like going fishing on one of the three lake outposts. Obviously, they love fishing. You can also go off-site. Like Aaron mentioned, there are off-site opportunities. Um, the Wednesday adventures aren't contained to 600-acre property. You can choose to go to a nearby amusement park, safari, zoos, uh, horseback riding stables, more, more horseback riding, zipline tours. Your family can enjoy the same adventures since they can stay on the other side of camp for the week. Isn't that cool? It's kind of like a family adventure camp. Um, you can learn new skills, learn valuable lessons that can lead you to careers. While the camp does renovations, scouts are invited to see the skills it takes, like electrical work, painting, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. It's a brilliant way to keep the camp updated and spin That's it awesome. in a way where you don't have to close it down. You can make it part of the program. Yes, yes, definitely. And it's interesting that they do a family adventure program nearby. What that tells me is that I bet they had a lot of parents visiting this camp with their kids, right? Maybe they're commuting in from out of state and they needed extra drivers and chaperones or whatever. We're like, well, why don't we just give them something to do while they're here? Or they That's just cool. wanted to see it. I mean, look at those pictures. I would want yes. to go too. <laughs> yes, 100%. Um, our, our next camp on our list of, of cool camps today, Gina Griswold Scout Reservation. This is part of the Daniel, Daniel Webster Council in Gilmerton, New Hampshire. The 3,500-acre property, 3, property contains two camps, Gina, Hidden Valley and Camp Bell. Between them, there are four bodies of water with multiple waterfronts where you can go sailing, snorkeling, and tubing. More than 60 merit badges are offered between both camps, including some you might not expect like farm mechanics and pulp and paper. That'd be a fun merit badge to earn at summer camp. Um, Hidden Valley offers merit badge programs in the morning and patrol and troop activities in the afternoon. The friendly staff tries to make sure everyone has a super fantastic day, as they say. At Camp Bell, the focus is more on patrol activities like a team building obstacle course and cooking contests. With horses, pigs, goats, and chickens, you'll get a feel for life on the farm at Camp Bell. You can work on merit badges like animal science, gardening, and horsemanship. 
There are trail rides as well as horsemanship outposts for overnight trips. You can see, Gina, like you said, we said earlier, we choose these camps because they offer a variety of activities in a variety of locations. Here's one that emphasizes uh, waterfront. They have four bodies of water. Aquatics are always a, a popular activity at summer camp, depending on, on how hot it gets. And uh, it's a working farm, basically. Horses, pigs, goats, and chickens. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty fun. For everybody. Yes, exactly. And if you are watching this and thinking, oh, I'm too old. I'm not a scout agent anymore. Well, guess what? There are very likely jobs at all of these councils available, at all these council camps available. There are definitely jobs at many camps available and at the high adventure bases. You can check out those job listings at jobs.scoutlife.org. That URL is at the bottom of the screen right now. Now, Aaron, if I say West Virginia and I say camp, Oh, you must be talking about the summit, I guess, right? I'm not talking about oh, the summit. I'm talking about Camp Mountaineer. Yes. This is the Mountaineer, Mountaineer Area Council. Um, Morgantown, West Virginia is where Mountaineer, or Camp Mountaineer is. And they have the big zipper. During the opening ceremony, you can look up. Camp staff will be sliding down the dual quarter mile zip lines, each carrying the American and West Virginia flags while taps is being played. It's a great way to start a week of camp tucked in the wooded hills of West Virginia. Um, and just a reminder, at the summit, there's the big zip, the big zipper. Pretty funny. Mm -hmm. It's often the staff that makes the camp so great, like we talked about earlier. Remember, you can apply for jobs to be staff, too. Mm -hmm. um, working with local organizations and a major college, Camp Mountaineer provides top-notch instruction and meals. Students from West Virginia University serve on the staff. Very cool. The camp partners with the university to provide the food service. They also work with local and state officials to help ensure safety, like a shooting range. You can ride the zip lines. Scale the 65-foot hexagon-shaped climbing tower, repel off natural rock face, and play on the human foosball court. Evening programs include escape room-style puzzles, movies, astronomy hikes, and art projects with Kool-Aid. At the end of the week, there's a beach party and water carnival with a lot of aquatic games. These sound so fun! These sound like some of the funnest camps I've ever heard of. And I want to point out that what Gina said there, uh, talking about the Big Zipper, uh, during the open opening ceremony, it's the camp staff that slides down yeah. the zip lines to Ooh. sort of open up the camp. So it while working at summer camp, it's a job. You have responsibilities. It's a but yeah, it's, exactly. You get to go zip lining, uh, and not to mention all the other fun activities they have at camp. If you're looking at a summer camp that offers horseback riding, ATVs, whatever it is, zip lines, rock climbing as a camp staffer, you get to do that stuff too. Absolutely. Pretty fun. Yes, yes, yes. Um, our last and final camp on our tour of cool camps for 2023, Gina, Rodney Scout Reservation in Maryland. This is part of the Del Marva Council. That's uh, Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia, for those of you who might not know. Uh, this camp is located in Northeast Maryland. Uh, if you love aquatics, this is the place for you. And I can tell you again, as a summer camp veteran, aquatics are going to be super popular at summer camp. The 900-acre camp sits at the head of Chesapeake Bay. Oh, that's cool. With a mile of waterfront. Sailing, water skiing, tubing, and swimming are all offered. You can even thank the bay for the pottery classes because that's where fresh clay is collected. That's cool. Um, many camps have a tower on which you can climb and rappel, but the one at Rodney offers ice climbing. Ice what climbing during summer. Uh, it's actually hard foam, Gina. Uh, that looks like that's it right there on a 32 foot wall, 32 foot tall wooden wall. But to use ice climbing equipment, you see uh, they've got an axe right there that they're using like picks and crampons to scale the ice wall. That's a pretty cool, it's more like an ice wall simulation. Yeah. Uh, but very, very cool. Anytime you can go ice climbing wearing shorts and a t shirt, I'm in. I'm interested. Yeah. Uh, the camp boasts more than 60 merit badges. Again, for those who, who mentioned merit badges, including swimming and nature, the nature merit badge which first year campers can earn while they work on outdoor requirements for tenderfoot second class and first class rinks. They also get to take part in other activities at camp like shooting sports, archery, and climbing. There are a lot of common denominators at these camps. Water sports is very common, uh, shooting sports, archery. And then there's some that are sort of a little more specialized, horseback riding, rock climbing, yes. uh, ice climbing, if you will. I mean, I've uh, never heard of summer ice climbing. 
Exactly. Very, very cool. Now I have. Um, yes. Quick shout out to Troop 35 and Skylar, who is going to the Jamboree. Yay, Skylar. That's going to be so fun. That's going to be awesome. Yes, yes, yes. And I will mention real quick, as we said earlier, these camps are looking for uh, employees. They're looking for folks to come work during the summer. Uh, Gina, one time I was at a summer camp with my son, a Scouts BSA camp, and it happened to be the last weekend of the season. They were about to close down. Uh, this was in Oklahoma. So they shut down like early in July before the summer gets like too hot. They do all their camping in late May throughout June and early July because eventually it gets a little too hot. So I was there when the staff was basically shutting things down. Let me tell you, they were sad. I mean, you could see it in their faces. They were sad to say goodbye to each other. You Aww. could tell they had a really bonding experience. They grew to really like each other and care for each other. It was really kind of touching to see. I also want to point out that this ended, it was July, before July 4th when they were done. That leaves you the rest of the summer, work at a second camp, go on vacation with your family, you know, whatever you might have going on, do a semester of summer school, whatever it is. It's not necessarily an obligation for the entire summer, depending on the camp. They run oh, different yeah. dates, they have different sessions. There seems like we had a Facebook Live on this earlier this year, and it seems like there's a lot of flexibility for different schedules. Yep. Even if your schedule doesn't necessarily match the job listing, reach out and find out if there's flexibility for you. Oftentimes there is. And also, guys, the pay is not bad. A the lot pay, of these places put you up. You know, right. your lodging and food is entirely paid for. So yes. um, the like pay is a not lot bad of at all. Yeah. And you figure you don't really have to drive. You're going to be staying there at the camp most like. Your lodging is paid for, and they 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 feed they feed you. So the only expenses you're going to have is when you want to go off camp somewhere to get food or something like that, which you can do. But yeah, it's it's a great little gig. Yes, and um, KM Scout Ranch even says we're looking for a few great staff members. So you guys apply, apply, apply. Yep. yep. And KM, make sure you post your jobs at jobs.scoutlife.org. Yes. There's a way that councils can public. post their jobs there. There's also a way that scouts or young adults or older adults can look for jobs yes. using the uh, search engine right there. As you can see, you can search by state, by age. If you you're a camper council, words. you see that four councils little menu item, you click that and then it should be pretty clear to you what you yes. do from there. Yep, create a free account. We'll approve it on our end. Behind the scenes, Brian is like the one that does all that work, which we appreciate. <laughs> you know, just put it on it. Um, exactly. Aaron, before we wrap up today's show, can you help me with Rob's comment he says my son and i were actually considering coming up without the troop but you don't have a maverick registration i'm assuming he's talking about jamboree i don't know about like the contingent putting together a process but rob there are guests you can come as a guest for sure i know yeah, that you can definitely come as a guest but i do think there are ways that troops are getting put into little groups i don't know that just you and your son can go but yeah, I think you can Rob knows folks at our council here, but I think you can get you can get paired up with someone else from our council. I think, I think I'm not so. an expert on that. Yeah, yeah, Rob would be Rob, Rob probably knows more than me. But yeah, exactly. I was just gonna say, if you're out there thinking I'd love to go, but I don't know anything about it, come right. as a guest. You can do that. Absolutely, absolutely. That, that it's actually a fun way to experience the jamboree because you get to see the summit, which is really a cool property. It's been is it just one day, a couple days? I can't remember how many days guests get to go. I think it's Don't one day. Don't on that. Yes, but. right. But it's a jam-packed, full, fun day at the summit. Definitely a cool, a cool thing to try out if you're not necessarily up for all. Uh, you know what? Well, I think you can do one half session, or you can do the whole twelve days, or whatever it is. There are options. Very cool. Well, guys, if you didn't see your summer camp on today's roundup of cool camps, just know that we've probably covered it in the past or we're going to cover it in the future all of our camps are really awesome but gosh i loved the eight we went over today you can check out past and other camps um they're not past camps they're all current camps you can pack, check out other scout camps at go.scoutlife.org slash they're, they're camps that we have covered in the past but exactly. they still are current camps yes and by the way km scout ranch says they did post jobs thank you very cool hope you, great job hope you get some uh some uh people clicking on it there yeah keep us posted um Aaron, good job, good idea on that job board. Yep, yep, Behind yep. Behind the scenes, it, Brian, great job executing it. Yep, yep. It is March 21st. There's a good chance that your Scouts BSA troop or your Cub Scout pack already knows what they're doing for camp this summer. If not, talk to them about it. It's about time to sign up. I mean, I don't, I don't think that lines have passed or anything, but it is about time to sign up. Cub Scout camp, I know you can wait a little, little bit longer to sign up for Twilight camp and day camps. And as a reminder, all those camps we went over, we went over, we used a lot of Scouts BSA terms like whitewater rafting and horseback riding and things like that. A lot of those activities, Cub Scouts can do the, the rock climbing and things like that. You can and zip lines, all that stuff like that is, is, is open. 
uh, depending on the property and things like that. So definitely something to look into. Gina, great job today. Appreciate that, everybody. Gina will be returning on Friday for Cub Chat Live. I will. Sorry, Gina. I'm I'm making Gina do two weeks in a row. That's okay. I can't do it this Friday, but Gina's filling in for me. I appreciate it. You don't even have to say much. that. You don't even have to admit it. I just wanted to publicly recognize Gina for filling in for me this Saturday. We Saturday appreciate this your Friday. public apology yes, and we accept it. Everybody, I can't <laughs> wait to see you again on Friday. And we'll both be that be back next Tuesday for another wonderful trek on Tuesday. Aaron, thank you so much, as great. always. Thank you, Gina. Great job, everybody. Thanks for watching.